the medical establishment in the United States is very undemocratic, or to put it mildly. Now, this is a guy coming from Taiwan in 1984. Under Chiang Kai-shek, we still had martial law at that time. So you cannot speak your mind, otherwise you find yourself in jail or in a very hard position. So in a way, I came to this country for higher education is because I was quite vocal um, against uh, KMT, Kuomintang, or Chiang Kai-shek. So my parents and other relatives, they have uh, managerial uh, positions and they all have to be members of the party. So they don't like me to speak too loud about anything against the party. So I say, all right, all right, I'll go to the United States anyway. So I came here, I went to University of Kentucky for my uh, PhD. And then um, after writing the report on Bozinski, I suddenly find myself, gee, it's a kiss of death to my professional career. Because look at JAMA. JAMA could print a, 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 a comment criticizing Bozinski, and now I'm writing a report a report saying that anti neoplastin has some merit to it and you've got to look into it. So halfway through writing the report, suddenly it dawned on me that might be the end of my professional career because there are a bunch of academic professors. They wrote things ferociously bad about Brzezinski's anti-neoplastin. And I have evidence and a report to say anti-neoplastin worth a second look. How would they view me professionally? And so I know in my heart that that's the end of my professional career. Uh, NCI and NIH, I find that uh, it's uh, uh, a place full of people with ego of titanic proportion. You know, they are all like working for their career, working for their fame and reach. Sometimes their hearts are not there uh, for the patients. They are more for their uh, on benefit and in the end that's what I realized so it was a disappointment you know they say uh, NIH is the uh, mega uh, medical center but then you look back in the past 10-20 years very few Nobel Prize winners came out of NIH and they got all the budget they got all the money to do research Say, even if you give me one million dollars to go back to uh, NIH, I, I won't. I won't. I wouldn't do anything against my conscience. So, eventually, what I found out uh, is that the culture is split in two. One, the orthodox, and the other one is the alternative. You've got this uh, orthodox culture and then their subculture living around it and it's it's fa fascinating you know politically it's like well you have the dominant party and they rule the country and then you find the fringe group uh, or opposition parties here and there you know and if the authorities are not too harsh on them. Sometimes they got a niche. They are surviving. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's in some way to me, it's very interesting cultural phenomena. Yeah, and finding it in a democratic 
country like United States and you have this medical tyranny there. Uh, in in tyrannies or in authoritarian uh, society, a lot of time people would refrain from speaking the truth. Okay? The atmosphere is there to prevent you speaking your mind even if you see the truth. The scale tactic is enough to force a lot of people not to speak the truth in the medical field. If that fear is there, people would do things to avoid harm to their professional life, to their family life, to them personally and it will perpetuate the fear forever and ever. So it's very difficult to delineate, say, ah, it's because the health in industry, it's because the pharmaceutical company, etc., or whatever. What is your uh, opinion, like if we wanna sort of get ourselves out of this mess? Well, my opinion is that if I'm a president of a country, I would split my uh, health budget in research into two portions. One for the medical establishment, one for the alternative field. And I say in the end of the day or in the end of the year, come and show me the result. If you get better result than the other, then I'll take the portion of budget out a little bit and put it into yours, put it into the winners. And if you continue to lose, you lose your budget. If there's two-party system, right, in democracy, oftentimes, let's have two-party system in medicine and let them run with the budget and come back in the end and say, which cat catches the most mice? And this is what the general population wants.